Today on Meal Wars, we're going back to the depression and taking out our aggression on some Swiss steak. Hello and welcome back to Meal Wars. If there's one memory that's seared in my mind from childhood, it's my dad making Swiss steak. It was kind of a big deal, or at least it felt that way to me as a kid, because he would get this thing out. And he'd start beating the crap out of steaks on the kitchen counter. A few hours later, we'd be eating this impossibly tender meat in this sumptuous rich brown sauce. Now, when you're like six years old and your dad is fighting the forces of chewiness with his trusty battle axe, it's kind of a spectacle. So what is Swiss steak? Well, it's definitely not from Switzerland. If you've ever seen cube steak at the supermarket, you know that stuff that looks like somebody's dog chewed on it for a while before they wrapped it up and sold it to you? Well, the machine that does the dog chewing is called a Swissing machine, hence the name Swiss steak. So mangling up the meat within an inch of its life is definitely vital to making this properly. I think there's a picture of Swiss steak as something that old people in like the 80s ate because they couldn't chew anything with their dentures. But Swiss steak actually originated in England in the early 20th century. It found popularity here in the United States when the depression was on and people were looking for cheap ways to make really good food. But then something happened. It just sort of stopped being great. Something that should have been among the ultimate comfort foods just became this dry, mushy, flavorless mess that nobody cared about anymore. It just kind of lost its luster. So the question is, can we bring it back? Can we take a simple dish like this and use a little cooking knowledge to make it better? I think we can. Do you think we can get it done in 35 minutes, start to finish? Oh, we're gonna do that too. Now I know what you're thinking. Look at Mr. Fancy Pants here with his cheap red meat. Anyone who's seen the prices out there lately knows there's no such thing as that, right? Well, don't worry. You don't have to mortgage the house for this or even lease your meat with an option to buy because this entire dish comes out to less than $2 per serving. So get ready, because the battle of the mushy meat. Will you get your mind out of the gutter? This is a family show, come on. You kiss your mother with that mind. The battle of the mushy meat is on meal wars. All right, let's get prepped for Swiss steak. We begin our journey with an eye round roast that I have sliced into half inch thick slices. In order to avoid the problem of flavorless meat, we need to season this with salt and let it penetrate really deep into the meat. I just can't say that as well as Guga, can I? So what I like to do is to salt it either the night before or in the morning before I go to work so that the meat is fully seasoned by the time I get home. And here's what they look like the next day. See the color change? That tells us that the meat is seasoned all the way through. It's already partially tenderized from the salting, but that won't stop us from getting medieval on it. And now it's time to cause some damage. I could just use a regular meat tenderizing hammer, but come on, it's tradition. We got our Swissin' axe out and we're gonna Swiss us up some steak. Now what you wanna do here is to remember that kid that used to kick you in the head with steel-toed boots when you were in the fourth grade. Just keep taking that and channeling it directly into the meat. Now I don't need to cube it or cut it or hit it with the ax, but we do need to beat the living snot out of it. Before we work on browning our meat, let's talk for a second about cooking methods. In order to make this cook quickly, we're going to be using an Instant Pot, which is really designed for exactly the kind of dish we're making here today. The Instant Pot has a saute feature that I really don't like to use for browning meat. First off, it just doesn't get hot enough. Secondly, it'll leave a bunch of cooking oil from the steak in our sauce, which will make it greasier, and no one likes that. But that doesn't mean that the saute feature isn't our friend, because when you throw a bunch of things into an Instant Pot and set the time, it takes some time to get up to heat and pressure. But if we turn it on, now, and then we throw our ingredients in and get it hot first, then it'll get to pressure a whole lot quicker. Don't have an instant pot, you say? Well, you could use a regular pressure cooker and do it in about the same time, or you can do it in a covered pan on the stove in low heat. That'll take you a good bit longer, but it's still awesome and totally worth it. Instructions for all different cooking methods, as well as full recipes are as always in the description and on mealwars.com. Now, back to our cooking. So into the pot goes one and three quarter cups of beef broth, three quarters of a cup of red wine, or a little more depending on your taste, 
one teaspoon of thyme, one bay leaf, one diced onion, eight ounces of mushrooms. Some people love them, some people hate them, but you can leave them out if you want. One garlic clove chopped, and a little bit of tomato paste. That adds to the beefiness of the dish, though it does give it a little bit more of a reddish tinge than my dad's used to have. Now let's set that sucker on saute and let her heat up while we get to work on browning our meat. We'll get a skillet heated with some neutral oil. I like avocado oil for this, but depending on your diet goals, butter or clarified butter can work here too. So now we dip each piece in flour and pop it on into the pan. I'm using gluten-free flour here instead of wheat flour. You can use either one and there won't be any difference either way in the final product. As soon as we're browned on one side, we'll flip it and finish it off. And then we nestle it nicely into our warmed instant pot. And we'll set that timer for 25 minutes. And guess what? You're done. Now an industrious person probably would have just thrown a few potatoes into the Instant Pot and called it a day. But since we're working on, on a cooking show here, let's throw some quick wheat night mashed potatoes together while we wait for our steak. We're gonna peel them, chop them, and then put them in a big pot of water. And we're gonna season that with salt, one tablespoon of garlic powder, and one tablespoon of celery salt. Now we're gonna let that boil until those potatoes are soft and ready for the mashing of their lives. Now that we've drained our potatoes and gotten them in a bowl, we'll add two tablespoons of softened butter. Now we're gonna add one quarter cup of sour cream. And I have some milk here to adjust the consistency. Now I'm not a big gadget recommender, but this thing has been a godsend. This is an attachment that came with my Braun Immersion Blender that I'll link to in the description. This thing is so great that I actually stopped using a potato ricer even for holiday mashed potatoes. And mashed potatoes come out perfectly fluffy every time and best of all, it's easy. Now that our Swiss steak is done, I've fished out the meat and placed it on a sheet rack, which I will tent with tin foil. The sauce is a nice consistency from the flour of the meat, but it still could use a little bit more thickening. So for that, we're gonna take a spoonful of cornstarch and dissolve it in some water. And we're gonna dump that on in. With the saute feature on, we'll have a thick sauce in less than a minute. Now it's time to plate this up and taste it. Here for the tasting with my sons, Jack and Mason. And here we go. Well, you guys ready to try? Yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. I hope you like it because one of the reasons that I looked at this recipe in the first place is because you are, have your new braces, so I needed some soft steak because you're really not too into the hard, yeah. regular stuff. So, so here you go. This is all for you. All of it? Then why did you Not all of it. Well, well, you know. No, you're just going to starve. It's just for me. Move over. <laughs> yeah, it's all Jack. Want you, mashed what? potatoes? Yeah, you guys want to try however you want to go first. What do you want to do first? A mashed potato. Shall we cheers? Cheers. Oh, cheers. Mmm, it's good. I like the sauce on it. Oh, the sauce, yeah? Yeah. All right. What do you think of the texture of those mashed potatoes? I think they're pretty mm, really good. good. Super yeah, warm I like it. Nice. Yeah, nice and fluffy. Should so, we go I mean, on to the meat? Since we're all, since we're having a free for all here, I may as well join in. Mmm. Mmm. Should go for the meat. Those are perfect. Yeah, sure. mm. Just fluffy and light. I'm telling you, that tool is awesome. Mmm. Oh. <sighs> it's chewy, but it's not like chewy hard. It's like super soft and nice. Nice, all right. Good texture. Do you think of the flavor? There's flavor all the way through. It's not mm -hmm. mushy. The sauce. And, it's not mushy and flavorless. Mm -hmm. All right. What is what is the big boss right. thing? Let me let me check it out. I don't know Hold if I up. can get in there. Mason's taking weapon. a giant piece. Yeah. Dude. Whoa. Okay. He's brave. <laughs> Here, let me try it. Mmm. It is lovely. Mmm. Flavorful all the way through. The red wine comes through, the um, the the beefy flavor, everything you want out of it, and nothing you don't. It's perfect. Mm. What it do you think of perfect. the steak? Soft. Mm-hmm. Nice. 
All right. So are you happy? <laughs> His opinion matters, I guess. <laughs> Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed what we did today. If you did, please like and subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified when we put up new videos. If you didn't and you're still watching, thank you for still watching this long. And I hope we do better for you next time. Alright, thanks a lot. Bye. 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 Subscribe.